Buenas tardes. My name is Laura Gomez. I'm the Rachel F. Moran Endowed Chair in Law at UCLA, and I'm also a member of the faculties of the Departments of Sociology and the Department of Chicana, Chicano, and Central American Studies here at UCLA. UCLA is a land-grant institution, and this land was taken from the stewardship of the Tongva peoples, the traditional caretakers of the Los Angeles Basin. We acknowledge and pay our respects to the Tongva Honukvoktem ancestors, Anhi Hiron elders, and Io Hinken relatives, past, present, and future. On behalf of UCLA's Critical Race Studies program, I welcome you today. As a founding faculty member of CRS in the year 2000, and as the program's first co-director with Jerry Kong, I'd like to say a few words of introduction about our program. We founded CRS in the wake of Prop 209's ban on affirmative action as a way to signal our ongoing commitment to teach future generations of racial justice warriors. 23 years later, well over 1,000 UCLA alumni have chosen the CRS concentration, and one quarter of our recent graduating classes have specialized in our program. On behalf of CRS Executive Director Jasleen Coley, and CRS Faculty Director, LaToya Baldwin-Clark, and the entire CRS faculty and staff, it is my honor to welcome you to our home today and tomorrow. So here we are, only three and a half years after we were supposed to be here. But a seeming world ago, before there was a pandemic, before we were all familiar with Zoom, before so many lives were upended by death, economic hardship, and new ways of living and working. We were determined to gather to have this set of conversations, to be rebellious together, in person, to honor our friend, Gerald Pablo Lopez, and all of you rebellious practitioners. Three decades ago, Jerry Lopez published a book that would go on to transform two fields of legal teaching and scholarship, what we used to call poverty law, and the then emergent field of clinical legal education. In rebellious lawyering, one Chicano's vision of progressive law practice, Lopez challenged the conventional approach to lawyers representing their disenfranchised clients, the regnant top-down approach. He coined the phrase rebellious lawyering to describe how progressive lawyers could and should collaborate with subordinated communities, with their allies, and with social movements. With characteristic modesty, Lopez wrote in the preface, quote, I try not to fool myself. This book alone is not going to convince people to reconsider what they do in and around progressive law practice, end quote. But I predict we'll spend the next two days proving him wrong. Whether in terms of lawyering in Los Angeles, in the state, in the U.S., or corners of the world from Brazil to Italy to New Zealand, the theory and practice of rebellious lawyering has reverberated far and wide. In part, this has been because Lopez has touched so many students and fellow teachers at UCLA, NYU, Stanford, Harvard, or California Western. But do not mistake this gathering for, gathering for a hagiographic exercise in self-indulgence. We do not seek to make Lopez or his rebellious lawyering concept heroic, nor would he allow us to. Instead, 
Our aim is a set of serious conversations in an epically dangerous but perhaps not so exceptional moment, both nationally and globally, about the path forward and the necessarily limited role for progressive lawyering in that world. I cannot resist the opportunity to make some personal comments as well. And as, as I look out on all of you, I am so happy that we will engage the work of my compadre, my friend, my mentor, my colleague, my teacher. I first heard of Gerald Lopez when I was a 21-year-old senior in college. It would have been around 2 a.m., because I was finishing up proofing and laying out the front page of the next day's Harvard Crimson. As a member of the newspaper's executive board, I spent one night a week in charge of getting the paper ready to be published on our huge printing press. On that front page was a story about Harvard Law School faculty voting to hire the first Chicano professor, one Gerald Lopez. Had he accepted, he would have become the first U.S.-born Latino Latina to teach on the Harvard faculty anywhere at Harvard. I would meet Jerry for the first time two years later in 1988 because he had rejected Harvard's offer, as you all know, and instead joined the Stanford Law School faculty with an endowed chair. I had enrolled in the JD program and the sociology PhD program, and I went to meet Jerry who, of course, confirmed for me that I had made the right choice. I was part of the first cohort of students in his and Bill Hing's Lawyering for Social Change program, and others, other people's. When I finally took a course with Jerry, after a year of sociology courses and a year of 1L courses, it was transformational, as I know many of you who were once his students can attest. The course was Jerry's Section 1983 litigation workshop. And whenever my own students complain about too much reading, (laughs) I tell them about Jerry's approach. In those pre-digital days, we received two huge six-inch binders full of articles, cases, and other materials. Craziest of all, he told us to finish, the reading, to finish reading the first one before class started. No, craziest was that we all did it. One of the many strokes of good luck I've had in my life was when Jerry rejoined the UCLA faculty in 1994, becoming my colleague. At that special time, under the leadership of Dean Susan Prager, There were actually three Chicano and Chicana faculty members here. The third was the late Cruz Reynoso. Three times as many Mexican-American professors as there are at UCLA today. No joke. To be Jerry's co-worker has been to experience the joy of receiving his supportive but critical edits on my written work, To be Jerry's coworker has been to get to spend 20 or 45 or 90 minutes engaged in deep conversation about parenting, about our families of origin, or just telling stories and reflecting on the meaning of life. To work with Jerry on faculty politics that resulted in hiring or tenuring colleagues or starting new initiatives or blocking regnant ideas. In short, To experience Jerry's love, warmth, humor, musical joy, and myriad more things, big and small. I am forever grateful, Jerry. It is my pleasure to introduce UCLA Law's new dean, Michael Waterstone. Dean Waterstone is a Los Angeles native who graduated from UCLA and Harvard Law School. He clerked on the Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals and worked at Munger Tolls and then became a law professor and was dean at Loyola Law School for several years. He is a scholar of disability law and has consulted with the National Council on Disability. And we are honored to have you say some words of welcome this afternoon.
wow, we made it, right? Um, so I have some prepared remarks. They do this for deans. I'll get to that in a moment. Um, but first, I just want to say how amazing it is to be here, how grateful I am to be welcomed into this community. This is my first CRS event as dean. Um, I've known of your work as both a member of scholarly communities, the legal community here in Los Angeles. So much of what this program has created was foundational in my own work, my own thinking about law and justice and inequality. Um, so I just want to kind of say thank you and note how incredibly special it is to me to be not just the dean of this law school, but a member of this community. So from the bottom of my heart, thank all of you. Okay, now I'll go to script. Uh, so first of all, welcome to this year's symposium. Uh, we are really appreciative that you chose to come this year. Uh, I did not realize that this was the event that the law school first intended to hold, but then ultimately postpone in March of 2020 when the world was imploding. So this was really like the tip of the spear. And when you kind of take yourself back to that moment in time, it's like, oh my God, how much has changed in our community, in the world. But it makes a moment like today particularly joyous. Um, I think we've kind of reached a point where we're gradually getting used to holding events together in person. And that's wonderful. That's terrific. But I just hope we don't take it for granted. I really hope we can, a, a moment like today can feel extra special knowing that we went so long not being able to gather like this. Uh, while, while the world has changed a lot since then, and, and these remain confusing and, and anxious times, the fact that you came today underscores the importance of our critical race studies program and the lasting influence of Jerry Lopez and rebellious lawyering. So we, and I love that I get to say we, started the CRS program in 2000. It was the, it, CRS was the first and only program of its kind at any law school in the United States. And it's emerged as the nation's premier program in race and the law. We have 16 core faculty members who are, it's not an exaggeration to say, giants in the field. Our alumni are making a difference in law, society. Here we're home to the very first specialization at UCLA Law. And in recent years, between one quarter and one third of our students have chosen to pursue that specialization. Also, in recent years, since the murder of George Floyd and unfounded attacks on critical race theory across the United States, our scholars and advocates have rededicated themselves to emphasizing and defending the importance of critical race studies. These are points of tremendous pride for our community. To everyone in our CRS program, just literally everybody in this room, thank you. And congratulations on now being 23 years young. I don't know what happens after 21, right? 21, you get to have a drink after that. It just kind of, I think at 25, you can rent a car. So you have that to look forward to. I know that the next decades will bring even more success. On the subjects of scholarship, advocacy, and making a difference in people's lives, I'm delighted to be here today for the celebration of rebellious lawyers everywhere. And of course, they are led by none other than Professor Gerald Lopez, who personifies these attributes. His 1992 book, Rebellious Lawyering, is a landmark in the field. And he's long practiced and preached the noblest ethos that any attorney or layperson could follow. To dedicate his or her career, his or, whole, whole, his or her whole being, to confronting injustice, curbing inequality, and plainly making better the lives of those who suffer from violence, racism, predatory practices in banking, housing, labor, and discrimination of all shapes and sizes. So on this occasion of this CRS symposium, I think we can all agree that no scholar and advocate is more appreciative for celebration than our colleague Jerry. Jerry? Thank you for your contributions to UCLA Law and the practice of lawyering and rebellious lawyering. You are a model for so many. And my hope is that on my very best days, there may not be a lot of them, but on my very best days, that I get to practice a little rebellious deeding. 
And those people include, of course, our panelists, some of whom are CRS program alumni who are now out in the field making an impact of leaders of conscience, the type of rebellious lawyers who this symposium is all about. So one last time, thank you for being here. And now let's move on to our next program.